What we're going to do here today is prove out our theory that we have that uh, the engine is the final heat exchanger. One of the misconceptions that people have is that the oil has to be some magic temperature in the tank and we maintain, and we're going to prove here today, that the engine gets hot enough that any external components that the oil goes through are going to rise that final heat up. A lot of people say that we uh, do not promote the heating of the vegetable oil for proper combustion. Nothing could be further from the truth. That oil has to be hot in order to spray and combust properly. Our contention is that the engine itself and that the components that are bolted to the engine have so much heat in them that any fuel that passes through them will pick up that heat and be injected into the engine at a very hot temperature. One of the things we've done is that we've taken several different styles of thermometers. This here is a thermometer that is uh, just an analog thermometer, nothing digital or anything. And we set it right here. Let's get a shot of where we set it. Right there by the uh, back part of the injector here. Now, of course, we're not taking core temperatures. These are external temperatures. This engine has been shut down for a while, and there is air passing over here. But even with that, as you can see, our temperature is up to 190 degrees. Get a little shade on that, see if it helps. Our temperature is up to 190 degrees. And if you look at the mass of metal that that injector is, and the fact that we're talking about little tiny spurts of fuel going through there, that fuel, from the time that it leaves the top of the injector and gets spit out the bottom of the, that injector, that fuel is going to spend quite a bit of uh, relative time in that injector and be able to absorb that heat. The concept that you could have, let's say, a 120 degree or even a 150 degree fuel and that it would pass through that injector and stay at 150 degrees and not pick up this 190 degrees is asinine because the fact of the matter is is that we're measuring external temperature that is actually exposed to ambient air right now and the head of that injector is screwed down in to the head of that uh, engine about that far and so it's going to be picking up temperatures even hotter but we're just showing what it can get at external we're actually over 190 degrees now and remember that this engine is sitting here cooling off let's uh let's take another style of uh, temperature or thermometer here. Let's put it right next to that injector there. And remember, this is out in the breeze. Uh, it's still definitely hot in there, but we've been shut down for a while. And let's look what's happening. It's steadily climbing to 145, 146. We just barely put it in there. And remember, this is an external reading. If we were to read the internal temperatures of that, they're going to be quite a bit hotter. We're at 185. Let's go ahead and uh, let that climb there. Let's pull another style thermometer out. Just in case any naysayers say that we have rigged our thermometers or something. Let's go ahead and open another one here. We've got another style. Let's pick another injector here. And let's set that dude in there. It's just at about, it's been sitting in the sunshine. It's about 100 degrees. And she's starting to climb. We've topped out on, well, we haven't topped out. We're at 199 degrees so far, 199.9, just past 200 degrees. And if we look at our other thermometer here, we're at about uh, 192, 193. We're coming on to 200 fast on this other one. Now let's take another form of thermometer. This is an infrared thermometer. When I first did these initial tests and post them on our website, there were some people that said that I was a dumb farmer that didn't know how to use a temperature gun. So uh, we've used different styles here, and, and these were all bought uh, locally, and so anybody could buy these style of thermometer at their local grocery store. We're at 205 degrees there. Let's see how this infrared thermometer is reading. This infrared thermometer is actually reading 184. We got 199.5 reading there, so we're definitely within the range here. We're, this thermometer's down; it's starting to lose heat as we've been had this engine open for a while. This thermometer's down to 100 or 190. Let me zap in there. 
we're at 198 with this one so we're definitely in the zone we're still at 208.0 on this thermometer and we have surpassed 200 degrees on this little thermometer here if we can get a tight shot there All right, we've just pulled the uh, input to the injection pump here. Let's take this temperature probe. It's a little easier to read. Stick that dude down in there. See what happens. I think it's dropping, but I think that, uh, as you can see how slow that it's dropping, that we're just uh, accounting for some uh, of the heat being given up by the engine there. So we're at 158.5 now and it's uh, really slowed down, it's really not moving anymore. Uh, one point that I'd like to make here is that this vehicle, I chose this vehicle because it has not been converted to, uh, to run on vegetable oil yet. And uh, the reason I wanted to do that is because when you do have a uh, heated filter, heated fuel lines, and a heated tank, that temperature of the fuel coming in is going to be a little bit higher so we would see a little higher values but just for the naysayers we want to take a stock configuration vehicle and uh, this injection pump and everything has had con return fuel flowing through it it has not been on a looped return system which would uh, keep some of this hot fuel and recirculate it and so that's one uh, very important point that I want to make uh, you know we've we've been uh, sitting here at 158.2 so an engine that's been shut down for 15 going on 20 minutes now uh, we are still at a, almost 160 degrees and you've got to realize that once this engine starts and there starts to be more commotion in that injection pump and things start moving around and the temperature of this engine comes back up we're going to be reading higher values so we're we're really showing that even in the worst case scenario uh, these things have a tremendous amount of heat Uh, the key goal of any conversion system is to provide unrestricted flow up to this point. And that's done, of course, by heating. And so when you have your, your heated tank and your heated fuel filter and your heated lines, although those may get the oil up to 140, 160 degrees, somewhere in that range, that's not the real point. So it's impossible to inject cold oil into a hot engine. It's just absolutely impossible. And, and to think that uh, you could take 140 degree oil and that it could take this journey from the internals of this pump through these lines, through these long injectors, and it would be presented into a combustion chamber that uh, is, is thousands of degrees and have that oil still maintain 140 or 150 degree temperature is absolutely unthinkable. The fact of the matter is that coolant, as it makes that journey, picks up that heat like that, and so will the oil as it makes that journey through these hot injectors.